so thanks so much for the introduction. I'm really excited to, to be here. Honestly, uh, oh, I guess I'm even ahead. You already did an intro slide. But um, I have just joined the Azure integration team back in July. Uh, so I'm uh, one of the newer program managers on that team. Really excited to be there. Before that, I worked at Microsoft IT, uh, working across integrating data a bunch of, uh, across a bunch of stuff. But I, in my time that I've been here at Azure uh, Integration, working specifically with Logic Apps and doing a lot of community stuff, I've really enjoyed this community. I've dialed into a good number of sessions, and I'm learning a lot uh, as I'm getting deep onto BizTalk services and BizTalk server and doing all these things. So the fact that I get to present at one of these is honestly a little bit intimidating. I definitely feel like the student uh, talking to a bunch of experts, especially on this large-scale integration stuff. But hopefully, especially around Logic Apps, where I've been focusing a lot of my time, uh, I my purpose here today was to kind of share here's some little tips and tricks and nuggets that um, I figured out that might be helpful um, some reasons that integration in the cloud gets nice and some benefits that it has especially if we've got time for it some fun stuff around Internet of Things because that's something that I'm really passionate about uh, I enjoy hacking away during the weekends and stuff on Raspberry Pis or Arduinos and those little things so uh, Logic Apps is kind of a fun bridge into that in terms of the integration story as well. Uh, so a few things as we get started. One of the things that I've been really lucky to get involved with since I have joined the team is to work a lot with the community members across Logic Apps, across integration, in our forums, in Yammer, in all these different places, collecting feedback, getting feedback, responding to questions. I, I really do enjoy it uh, because there's some awesome people out there who are doing some awesome work. So one of the things that we've done, if you're not aware of, is a webcast that we do every month called Logic Apps Live where we'll just, uh, I'll usually host them, we'll get a program manager to uh, potentially some developers or whatever working on Logic Apps to talk about some of the stuff we've been working on, some of the stuff that's new, um, show a, a quick demo. Uh, if you're interested in seeing the recordings, we've done three so far. You can see them at this link, uh, aka.ms slash Logic Apps Live. We will be doing one in September. I can't commit, commit to this date because we've got to make sure a few things are lined up. Um, but we're shooting for around right now September 24th at 11 a.m. Redmond time. Um, so if you're interested, you could potentially, you know, block your calendar um, around that date, but if you subscribe to this channel or follow Logic Apps on Google+, you'll get an alert when we do this next one, and we tweet about it and stuff however we can. The other thing that I'll say even before I get started into some of these tips is, and I, I, I think I've got some cool demos here too, that um, showing that Logic Apps has a few capabilities and functionalities that isn't super apparent. Um, but I definitely want to invite everyone here, if you have any questions, feedback, thoughts, if you try to use Logic Apps and you're like, hey, here's just my five cents or ten cents or however much your opinion's worth, <laughs> uh, here's my email, uh, jeff.holland at microsoft.com. Seriously, reach out to me. Um, let me know. I've gotten some amazing emails. Even this weekend, I got some emails from some people who were using Stack Overflow and asking some questions. And they reached out and said, hey, here's just some feedback of some things that would make this even better or more useful for me. I love that. And, and we share it out as a team. We talk about that stuff as a team. Um, it's super useful for us. We use user voice, um, the MSDN forum, Stack Overflow, any of those things you'll see us involved. But, but please feel free to reach out. Okay, so getting started, uh, Logic Apps is um, an integration solution right now in Microsoft Azure that lets you integrate across a number of different APIs. So even before, maybe even before I go into a Logic App, and we're going to add some extra features that one of the challenges right now that we are in preview, um, and we're working with this designer right now that we're adding a ton of improvements to that we hope to get out soon. Um, but there's some functionality and features that are available through the Logic Apps, and let me zoom in a little bit too, that are available through the Logic Apps engine that aren't super apparent. So part of my goal today is to show some tips and tricks of some things that you might not notice right off the bat of, hey, here's some stuff you can do, but I'm hoping I can share some. So the first one we're going to talk about is integrating with your own custom API, and specifically because in order for this demo to work, we have to use a custom API right now um, that's on GitHub. But before we do that, I want to go over a little bit of the architecture of what's going on behind the scenes. 
So on the left here, sorry, I just threw this slide together <laughs> about half an hour ago, so it's not the most elegant diagram, but hopefully it will help show what I'm talking about. So this left part that I'm circling with my mouse, this is the API app. This is what an API app looks like in Azure. An API app, I'll start at the back actually. So you've got a website. Maybe you come into Visual Studio and you create a really simple uh, rest point on the internet where you just kind of have a controller. That controller accepts a get or a post or whatever and it returns some data. You get data, you integrate, you do all the stuff you want on the back end. Well, you can integrate with this feature in Azure called API apps where you kind of click that website into an API app. And the benefit of that is once you click into this API app, it gives you a lot of things for free. So this API app will handle authentication for you. You can easily integrate with like Microsoft account or Facebook or Twitter or, or Azure Active Directory. All of these identity providers, API apps just kind of gives you for free. Um, it will handle security for you and scaling and it just adds this other layer onto your simple website uh, to make it act more like a, a scalable API in the cloud. Now that API, getting even a little bit more technical, talks to something called a gateway. And this gateway is just there to add that extra layer of authentication and security. Uh, and the reason I'm showing this is because I'm going to talk a little bit about deployment scripts because everything in Logic Apps and API Apps and App Service is built on top of the Azure Resource Manager, which means that you can create these resource scripts that you've probably seen if you've worked much with Azure lately where you can quickly deploy new API apps, you can deploy at scale just from a deployment script and say, hey, I want eight API apps, here's what I want the eight API apps to do, I want those eight API apps in a Logic app, here's my deployment script to do that, and you can just say, go into this subscription, go into this one, go into that, which allows you to quickly scale or move things across or, or uh, be a little bit more agile. So you have this gateway, and this gateway is nice because it will handle all your tokens. So one of the things with Logic Apps is we integrate with a lot of third-party providers and solutions. Uh, we integrate with things like SQL Server, on-premise SQL Server, SAP. We've got some BizTalk connectors. Uh, we've got Facebook connectors and Azure Storage connectors. Well, all of those things have authentication. Whenever I need to do something with Facebook, I need to have a token to say, hey, I have permission to go access Jeff's Facebook resources. And while your API app can give you some of that stuff, the gateway's nice because it has a token store where it can store all these tokens. You can pass these tokens back and forth. And this is, this is good to know because when you look at a Logic Apps definition, you're going to see things like tokens. You're going to see things in deployment scripts like API app hosts or API apps. And so I just wanted you to kind of complex integration scenarios where you're integrating, integrating across a number of different APIs, storage solutions, whatever, uh, setting some logic there and some conditions. So hopefully that's clear. Uh, let's go into, uh, hopefully that did go, and again, <laughs> let me know if there's questions on that. So for this demo, I actually just want to do a really simple logic app, but we're going to add some special sauce to this. So for this demonstration right now, all I'm going to do, uh, you'll see once I open a Logic App in Provision 1, here's the designer right now. I mentioned we're adding a lot of improvements to this to make it a little bit nicer of an experience. But on the right-hand side, you have all of the connectors that you can integrate with. You'll see there's a lot of stuff here. Uh, most of you are probably familiar with this. For this Logic App, though, all I'm going to do is I'm going to write a date into a blob storage path, and then I'm going to read a date from that blob storage path. Uh, so that's the Logic App, which is fine. That's a great app. And you'll notice I actually ran this, uh, I don't know, at 10.49 a.m., so about an hour ago. And it worked, and here's the portal, and I can see here's my runs, and if I click into this, I can see did this succeed, did this succeed, and I can click in. We also have an SDK to allow you to iterate through this. But one of the requests we get often is, is there any way that I can monitor this better, that I could kind of create like a, a – process, uh, you know, BizTalk has BAM, it's got all these cool different things that you can analyze things as they go through, and right now through the portal that's harder to do, but there are ways that you can leverage Azure services right, right now, and again, I'm not going to make any promises on features, but we do want to make this 
easier to do, but I'll show you how right now with the current preview package, we can add a few additions to this logic app that are going to make it so that we can analyze this at real time, set up some alerts, do some cool stuff using Event Hub, Stream Analytics, and Power BI. And part of this too, whether or not you're going to use Event Hubs in some of these techniques, that's fine. Uh, but as you watch me add this to this app, it's going to show you some of those things that I mentioned aren't necessarily as obvious with logic apps, like conditions. Um, you can have two or three or four rows of parallel processes happening at once. You can have kind of if then else logic, which when you look at this at first, you just kind of click things and they just chain together in a single line and you're like, well, I guess that's all I've got. But there's stuff you can do to, to improve that. So I'll, I'll show you all of that as well. Um, okay, so for this to work, I mentioned I want to, anytime that there's an event in this logic app, whether the logic app has started or whether a step has completed or the whole logic app is completed, I want to shoot off an event to an Azure event hub. And Azure Event Hub is a service in the service bus offering for Azure, which has like queues and topics in the cloud. And Event Hub's a really cool one. Event Hub, I honestly think of it like a giant ear inside of the cloud, and you throw any event in any format you want at this massive ear called an Event Hub, and it will catch all of your events and, and let you do stuff with them. You can set a retention policy. I think by default, things are guaranteed to stick around in that Event Hub for seven days. Um, and you can pull things, you can read from Event Hub, but it's got a huge scalability. It, it, it handles, each Event Hub can handle a gigabyte of data per second. So you can throw massive amounts of data at this Event Hub. Anytime you want to track some tasks, just throw it in Event Hub and that's great. But uh, there's a little spoiler because you see Event Hub right here. Right now we don't have a native Event Hub connector in our marketplace, um, but it's something that I wanted to do and it's something a few people have asked for. So we actually have started uh, about a month ago. If you go on GitHub, uh, we have opened up, me and a few of the other program managers here, you see Steven uh, contributes a lot. We also have another one, Samir, who's contributed to some of the stuff. We opened up this Logic Apps GitHub repository that we've added some extra API apps that might be useful that the community's asked for. And we're working with our engineering team to make sure that these get uh, you know, an SLA around them. And hopefully we onboard all of these into the marketplace so you don't have to get them from GitHub. Uh, we're working on the best way to do that right now. But in the meantime, you can grab them from GitHub. So you see we've got this Event Hub one, which uh, it updated three days ago because I tweaked it even a little bit. But that's been up there for about two weeks. Another really good one just to point out is C-sharp scripting and JavaScript scripting API apps, which allows you to add these API apps where you can run in your logic app. You add like a C-sharp step, and you can give it some C-sharp code that it will go through and return some output. Right? And you can import libraries into that C-sharp connector. So if you have a DLL that you want to use in that and execute it in the cloud, you can. But that's nice, too, because sometimes there's extra steps you want to do in your logic app that you're like, man, if I could just write five lines of code, I could do this, but I don't really want to have to write a full-fledged API. Uh, that's fine. So, so those things are nice. Now, the good thing is there's this service in Azure uh, called Deploy. Uh, if you actually go to deploy.azure.com, um, I mentioned there's these ideas of uh, a, I actually will open the C-sharp one, so let me show you. So if you go to this GitHub, which is github.com slash logicapps.io, sorry, I know my monitor's got super high resolution, so it's not always super easy to see. Um, I'll actually zoom this just in case, too. So all of these API apps have this button right here called Deploy to Azure. Uh, and this is nice. This is a service that someone set up at azuredeploy.net or deploy.azure.com where we have given this JSON file, which is the resource template, to deploy this API app. So this is the template I was talking about before. And you'll see all this is doing is this is a JSON definition, which you send to Azure, which says, here's all of the resources that I need provisioned. Here's all the different pieces. So you'll see I need a gateway host. You'll see later on, I need a gateway. Uh, I'm going to need a API host. And this is kind of back to this chart here, right? So I need all these different pieces for this API to work. So I need an API host. Uh, I need an API. And then at the end here, I could add a uh, logic app definition. Now I know, and for me too, you look at one of these JSON definition files, and you're like, what is happening here? There's I mean, if I walk you through it, I could walk you through each of these steps and say, here's where we provision the gateway host, and here's where we provision the gateway. But when you're just starting out with these templates, it's very easy to get lost or even know where do I start, right? If I'm making one of these from scratch, 
where do I start? So there's two resources that are extremely helpful. One is that there's a GitHub repository of deployment samples. And this is actually just a modified deployment sample that we have here to deploy an API app. So there's one to deploy a logic app, there's one to deploy a logic app with an API app. Um, that's a great resource to look at. The other one that is not nearly as known but is super useful is if you go to this website called resources.azure.com. And this is a GUI that we're doing a better job. It's actually now being embedded more into the Azure portal. But what this website allows you to do is explore the resources that you have in your Azure subscription right now. So for instance, I've made this Logic app right here. I made this this morning that has these blob connectors. I don't necessarily know what the definition is. Uh, you could go to CodeView to see pieces of it. But if I come in here into Arm Explorer and I open up the subscription, and let's open up that resource group. And again, let me zoom in here. I know my text is very small. Okay. So here I have all of the logic apps in my current resource group that I've selected. And here's fresh logic app, right? So I can click this and right here, it's going to tell me for this one that you created in the GUI, here's what this definition script looks like. Now this isn't worth a whole lot by itself because everything is hard coded, right? I don't necessarily have the parameter values that I need, but it's a great step to go and explore your different resources and say, hey, when I tweaked this thing in the GUI, what does that look like in the definition script in the background? So this is very useful as you're going through different deployment scripts and you want to see what's a good spot for me to go. Again, there's templates and I think Visual Studio even, when you open Visual Studio and you say new Azure deployment, it will give you some steps. But I really encourage you as you're playing around with this, if I want to look at my API apps, for instance, the Event Hub API, which is the one on GitHub, here's that definition, right? And that's actually just a piece of the definition that it's pulling straight from this GitHub repository. Uh, so there are some resources, again, I'd invite you to check out on this, uh, I actually even have a branch here where this Azure deployment script at the very end, again, I'm, I'm not going to take the time, there's a lot of stuff I want to cover. After I deploy the API app, after I deploy these different pieces, I actually do deploy in this script, I've said after I have that API, after I have the gateway, after I have all those pieces, now give me a logic app. And here's where my logic app definition starts, right here at the bottom. And you'll see for this logic app definition, I'm saying I want a recurrence trigger of one hour. I want to add this action, which is going to reference the API app that I provisioned earlier. So these little brackets here in this resource group thing, um, that's calling function. So I'm going to concatenate my resource group ID with the app service API apps. Again, these are there's templates and stuff to, to help you understand more of this. I'm going to execute a script. In this case, I'm just going to return the argument. Oh, this is actually outdated. Uh, I changed the API. But anyway, here's my action. I haven't updated this uh, deployment script. I, I don't return args anymore. I changed how it works, but I would return. So in this case, what I wanted to do is I wanted to return hello world. Uh, so initially, I would say whenever you pass in objects to your script, you have to say args. I made it so now I would just say return message, and return message would return me hello world because message is the token. But anyway. Uh, that's neither here nor there. Um, and you'll see too at the, at the top of all these deployment scripts, you'll usually have parameters. And this is really useful because if I have, for instance, this API app deployment script, at the very top I have all these parameters that I need, but when I deploy a different API app, I just keep the same script and I just modify some of these values. So I say instead of the app being called C Sharp API, I want the app to be called Event Hub API. Uh, the gateway name, I don't really care about uh, specifying here's what I want the logic app name to be so you have these parameters at the top that then you can reference like you'll notice here at the location this bracket I'm referencing the parameter for my service plan name so I'll actually show you right now so let's see what would happen if you come to logic apps IO and I know that was a lot hopefully you're familiar with resource groups that's worth another session or two alone but with those tools of the templates and seeing what's on our github as well as this resources.azure.com it's enough to, to help you get started. Uh, I wish I could go into more detail, but I do want to tweak out that logic app. So if I went into this Event Hub API right now and I click this Deploy to Azure, it's going to call that service, uh, which is deploy.azure.com. It's going to read that deployment script, which is, I can't remember what it's called, like deploy, Azure deploy.json. And now this service has said, I notice you have all of these parameters. You can go ahead and fill them in. So I already have a resource group I want to use. I can select the resource group I want to deploy this to. 
I can give it the name of my gateway, which I usually just get the site name and add gateway to it. Uh, I can give it the name of the service plan I want, or I could name an existing gateway. If you name anything that's already existing, it will just attach to the existing one. Anyway, once I fill all this out, um, I would click Next, and this will go ahead and deploy this into my subscription. So even though we've posted the code up here on GitHub, you can easily just deploy the working API up in your subscription. All right, hopefully that was clear. I, 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 those resource templates are so ugly. I hope it didn't just lose everyone right there. But let's pretend you just didn't even worry about the template. You just you went to GitHub. You said deploy to Azure. I want to deploy this API. I have you deploy it to the resource group you want. Once that's done, once you come into your Logic app again, this was here from before. But this is what it would look like. Now I have a custom API that I can integrate with my Logic app. And again, you could—you don't have to do these from GitHub. I could deploy an API app from Visual Studio that I program. But in this case, this one's open source. You're more than welcome to use it. So let's, I mentioned before I want to send some events to the Event Hub. So for instance, let's start with just a really simple event that's when the Logic App starts, I want to send an event to Event Hub. So I'm going to go ahead and add an action. And I'm going to say send string to Event Hub. I'm probably actually going to get rid of the send object one. It allows you to not give it a string value as the message, but you could give it a JSON object. But it, anyway. Uh, so all I need is the connection string for my event hub, which I can get from the portal, the name of the event hub, and the message that I want to send to the event hub. So in this case, I've actually already got in the, and maybe I'll show you even before I add this in. So let's go ahead and cancel this. If I come over to code view, which shows this switches to the I'll discard, that's fine. This switches to kind of the JSON definition. It's, it's in the back of this logic app. Uh, it's, a, it's a smaller view. But at the top, you'll notice here's the tokens that it's generated to authorize some of these calls with the gateway. And then here's kind of where my logic app starts. But you can also add your own parameters. So for instance, I know I'm going to have a lot of these event hub connectors. I know every one of those event hub connectors is going to ask me for a connection string. So I went ahead right here, and I added my own parameter. And that parameter is called event hub. I gave it the value of my connection string. And that's it. So now what that lets me do is when I add this event hub connector, and I say send string, in this connection string, so I don't have to type out this value every time, I can do the at sign parameters event hub. And what's going to happen is at runtime, it's going to substitute that parameters value in because I called said I'm going to do a function here and it's going to switch that in with my actual connection string. So that's just a little tip that's, that's nice. When you have things like connection strings or stuff that you repeat a lot, you don't want to have to do control C, control V a ton. Um, that's a great way to do it. My event hub name is called logic app and for this message, I just want to say that I have started. Let's see here. I just want to say that I've started. So I'm going to show you here. Actually, here's the messages. Let me zoom in. Let me make sure that this is showing on the screen because I'm in remote desktop and then I'm, okay, it looks like it's showing. So here are the three messages that I'm going to send. I'm just going to give you a spoiler alert right now. The first one is that it started. And this is the, I, I like sending JSON to event hubs. It, it handles it well and it makes it nice when I do things like stream analytics. All I'm going to send is this event hub message, which has the JSON object to, or the key to, what's the step name? What's the current time? What's the status? What time did this action start? And what time did this action end? So for this started one, it's really simple. I'm going to say started. I'm going to say what's the current time now? Now, actually, I'm going to segue. I'm all over the place. So <laughs> I'm glad this is recorded because I things pop up and I'm like, oh, I want to make sure you understand this. You'll notice in this logic app definition, I used it when I said the parameters. I'm using it now when I'm getting the time. Uh, I, I pull this at sign a lot. Now this at sign is a signal, a signal to the logic app that, hey, don't take this literally anymore. I'm about to call a function in the workflow definition. Now one of the most common questions that I get as people start with logic apps is, where is this workflow definition? And we are working hard. This is on the top of my to-do list to make this show up in everybody's face so nobody has to ask. But we're not quite there yet. <laughs> so the quickest way, if you want to find this, is if you go to uh, Azure Logic Apps, if you just find the main page on Azure about Logic Apps, and you click Documentation, 
that first page it takes you to right here, there's a link to the definition language. And again, I'm, I'm working to make this search engine optimized so you don't even have to do this much. But for now, without giving you the direct link to this MSDN page, that's a good way to find it. And here is the MSDN documentation for all of the different functions that you can do inside of a logic app. And again, I'm zoomed out a ton. Um, so for instance, let me just search now. You'll see that there's this function to get the time now, which is UTC now. A really common one is the actions. Oh, don't do control uh, F when there's a word that common. But so I'll just show you on this example. So another really common one is at actions, right? Which is says, get me some of the inputs or the outputs or the status of one of the actions. Okay, so that's what I'm going to use. All right, and and you'll notice too, I use this little bracket that's documented as well. But what that's saying is, whatever I pass you, use string interpolation to make this a string because I'm putting this inside a quote, so I want to make sure I don't pass in any weird funky values. So I'm going to do at uh, the curly brace UTC now curly brace. All right. So here's the first event that I want to send off, which is I started, I started now. In this case, the start time and the end time, I'm not really doing an execution, so I'm just going to do it. Now the next two events, I'll just show you this now because I'm already at the screen. I want to also send an event whenever I perform the write blob step, which is that first step, right? The first step in my logic app is let's write a date into blob storage. So I also want to shoot off an event whenever that happens, whenever it completes to say, okay, you know, here was the step name, blob write, here's the current time. Now there's some cool stuff, and this isn't apparent at all, and so I want to highlight it too. There's some stuff that auto-completes for you. So if I come back into my Logic app, and I try to do something, and I click like these dot, dot, dots, there's a few things that it's going to auto-complete. Like it's like, hey, you just got a blob. Do you want to just put in the content? And that's great. You'll notice it's going to give that code for me, which is body.content for this case. Uh, but there's some stuff that it's not here that you can still do, so I want to show some of it. A good way that I test this, by the way, until I'm working on docs right now, actually, I was writing them last night, to show you all of the different things. But if you add an HTTP action to any point of your Logic App and you shoot it off to request bin, I don't know if you're familiar with that service. It's awesome. It just gives you a bucket to listen to stuff. Uh, you can just send something like, if, if this was an event hub or if I was sending this to request bin, one of the things that I always do is I'll say, like, actions blob and the name of this, if I come over here and hover over this I, you see the ID. You might not be able to read it because of my resolution. But the ID here is blob. The ID for this one is blob zero. So when I call it, I use it by the identifier. But I can just say actions blob. I don't even have to say dot outputs or dot whatever. And if I send that off to request bin, you can dissect and see exactly what's getting sent off. So there's three attributes that are super useful but are a little bit hidden. Let me minimize this since I've... And one of them is, I'm actually using all three of my favorite right here. One of them is dot status. And what this is going to do is whenever an action completes, it's going to tell you it was skipped, it's going to tell you it succeeded, or it's going to tell you it failed. And those are three very useful things to know for a step. So in this case, I want to know, well, how did this action go? What was the status? Did it succeed? Did it fail? The other thing that every action outputs is a start time and an end time. When did this operation actually start? When did this operation end? This is super valuable for me if I want to figure out what's the duration of things, how long are things taking as I follow them through. So I'm going to use all three of those here. Again, at actions, blob, dot, end time. And for the second message, which is read, it's pretty much the same, but instead of calling the, instead of finding out, well, what about this blob action, I'm actually using blob zero, which was that read operation. Okay. So here's the three messages that I want to send. So let's start with that first one. So I'm just going to copy this. And let's come back into our logic app. So for my message, I'm just going to paste this. Okay, that was the one I wanted to use. Go ahead and say check. Now, if you're smart, you're thinking, that's awesome, Jeff, but that is not going to send when the logic app starts, right? Because you, you are very intelligent, I'm sure, and you say it's going to do this step, and then it's going to do this step, and then it's going to do this step, and that's not what you want to have happen, and that's true. So if I switch over to code view, let me save this first. If I switch over to code view, every time you add something at the end of a logic app, it defaults to assuming you want it to be the next step. So it adds this one single condition. And again, conditions are defined in this workflow definition document I showed you how to get to earlier. But it defaults to the condition which is depends on and whatever the last step in your logic app was. So in this case, it's that read step which is called blob zero. Well, what depends on is a condition that means only do this step if the step that I specify 
completes and that step succeeds. Let me zoom in again. I keep forgetting. Once I zoom in too far, though, Chrome kind of loses its mind. Anyway, so uh, again, let me repeat that since I was kind of doing that. So this would only execute with this condition if blob zero was completed and the status of blob zero was succeeded. But that's not what I want. In this case, I don't want this to depend on anything. So I'm just going to delete this. So that's the first, actually, I'll delete the whole object so it doesn't whine at me. I'm going to say, you know what, I don't want any conditions, just execute this whenever. And you'll notice when I save that, when I come back to the designer, I, I, I'm zoomed in a ton right now, but you'll notice it actually sorted it and it said, hey, this isn't the last step, you actually want to execute this in parallel. So now whenever this logic app starts, it's going to execute this event hub API at the same time it does this blob connector, which is great because I just want to know when did my logic app start. Okay, so now I can add a second event hub one. And we're going to do the send string again, and I'm going to say at parameters uh, event hub was the name, and the event hub name is logic app. And for this message, I shouldn't have done this in a separate one, but it's this one, right? I want to know. How did the blob write function go? I thought I muted this, but that's all right. How did the blob write function go? Um, what was the status? What was the start time? And what was the end time? So this is where it gets fun. This is where I love it. I'm just going to paste this for now, and then I'll show you how we get where we want. Again, we're having the wrong thing where, hey, you're not showing me this. It's only going to show. statement. I'm going to do the more common type of expression or the mo more common type of condition, which is called an expression. And an expression is just a logical statement that it says, if this logical statement evaluates to true, then execute this step. Now, the important thing to note with expressions is that if you are referencing another action in your condition, it will will not check that condition until all of those actions have finished. So in other words, if I add a reference here to actions blob, obviously this isn't a valid condition because it's not a Boolean, but if I saved that, it would know, hey, don't even try to evaluate this condition unless blob has completed. Now the important distinction here is that blob just has to complete. It doesn't have to have been successful. It could have failed. It could have been skipped but it won't even check. So that's nice because depends on will only execute if it's successful. So in this case, I've actually found kind of a, a wonky way to do here. I've got to evaluate to make sure this is the same. Pretty much, I want this to execute whenever the blob step is done. And I don't care anything else because I, I just want to know what the status is. So how I figured out how to do this, and there's probably a better way. Um, I just need to be able to reference that connector in here somewhere. So I actually do a not equals, okay, again, this is, I'll, I'll write this out and then I'll explain it. Uh, blob dot status null. And then we close the equals and then close the not. I think that's all of them. Okay. This is the expression that I put in sometimes, which is pretty much just saying as long as the status of blob connector is not null, and I will tell you right now, the status will never be the string null, right? It just won't happen. But the reason I do this is because this, this will make it so it waits at least for this blob connector to finish. So I just put in kind of a wonky condition here. There's probably a better condition that you could put in here that's not so complicated. But I just say make sure that the status is not null. And if the status is not null, which it will always never be null, wow, that, that was a terrible sentence, then it will execute. So let me go ahead and save this. So you'll notice it also rearranged this one, but it didn't put it at the bottom because it knows it has to wait for this step to finish before it can do this step. So what's going to happen now is it will do, it will start, both of these will happen at the same time. As soon as this one is done, if it's successful, this one will start. No matter what happens, if it's successful, failed, or whatever, this one will start at the same time. Okay, so I can get the event there. And finally, the last event, um, let's say send that string again. We're so close to being done here, and then I get to show you how awesome this is. Event hub, which is that connection string. And we're going to say logic app, and let's grab that message. 
which is for the blob read step. Let's come in here and paste that in and save it. Now again, it's going to default to depends on, but I want to know even if this step fails. So I'm going to change this. So instead of depends on blob zero, wow, being zoomed in this much is just doing works on this designer. Expression, and let's do something similar to the one above where we're going to say not equals actions, and this one's called blob zero dot status, and we're going to say don't equal null. Save it. It's going it, to, I think it's actually going to keep this one here because there's no other action, but this action will execute even if the previous step fails. All right, so now we've added these three events to execute in parallel with our logic app that are going to give us some statuses of what's happening. Now that's cool. Whenever I run this app, that'll get sent to an event hub, but I'm still only halfway there, right? Because I need to eventually read that event hub. I want to know what those events are happening. And you could, they've got a really good SDK for event hubs that you could listen to the event. But my favorite thing to do is to use a service called Azure Stream Analytics. Uh, Azure Stream Analytics, I believe it's not in preview anymore. Uh, I'm not positive. It was in preview for a long time. This is an amazing service that will analyze heaps and heaps of data real time and allow you to do queries on top of them. It looks very much like SQL. So for stream analytics, uh, this is really big, big data IoT solution because I could send, I mentioned event hubs can handle like a gigabyte of data at a time. I can send all those events at stream analytics in real time it's going to process those events and let me do some cool stuff with them. So I've gone ahead, right now you have to do it in the old portal, but I've created this stream analytics job where my input for this job is the event hub that I'm sending all my events to. My output is Power BI. Now there's a ton of outputs you could use. If I, I won't do this now because it's running. You could add a new output to uh, a service bus queue. You could add an output to blob storage. You could add an output to SQL. There's a lot of different outputs you can do. But for this case, I want to do Power BI because I want to watch this logic app in Power BI. And I want to see all those events in Power BI, which is very cool. So every stream analytics job, and I hope you can see this. Um, I'll zoom in once. You'll see here, I have a statement here, and this looks just like SQL. It's a little bit different. There's some cool stuff you can do that's outside. If you click on this help button, you can go directly to their documentation on it. But I'm just going to walk you through this query really quickly. I'm going to select those properties that I'm sending, right, which was the step name, what's the time, what's the status, when did this start, when did this end. But then I also want to know how long did this last, right, which is pretty much what's the difference between the start time and the end time. And I can do that in Stream Analytics. In real time, it's going to calculate this, okay? So I want to figure out the duration. So I actually use a with statement to do that. And now I just have a select, which is select, okay, uh, maybe I'll actually show the bottom one first. <laughs> select all that stuff, select star, push it into Power BI from this with statement, which is logs, okay? So real time, Stream Analytics is going to be combing through that event hub, grab the data, calculate what's the duration, and push that into Power BI. Now, I also want one other step. This is another cool thing you can do with Stream Analytics where you can say, you can have things called windows. And there's three different types of windows, a rolling window, a tumbling window, and a sliding window, which are just different ways of, it's like a, a cool group by where you can say, I want, to, I want Stream Analytics to analyze five seconds worth of data or 10 minutes worth of data or a day's worth of data and find stuff on that. This is super useful when you want to detect things with like anomalies. So in Stream Analytics, I could write a query that says, let's get your daily average for how many, uh, let's say you've got a logic app that does POs. And this is actually one of our customers does is building a logic app to process their POs in the cloud. And they, they kind of inspired me to, to build this demo. And let's say you want to have a Stream Analytics job that says, what is my average per day of process like POs that come in into my order, right? So maybe on average I get a thousand orders a day. The cool thing with Stream Analytics is you could actually write logic that says if I have a day or if I have an hour where I'm not meeting the average by like 20%, I need to know. Like you need to send me an alert, send something into the service bus queue where I'll have something happen. Uh, so this can kind of detect anomalies and let you know, hey, by the way, you might not be getting any errors, but you're getting some really weird activity. This is not normal data, right? 
you can do that kind of stuff in, in stream analytics and output it into a service bus queue where you have an event to get kicked off or a logic app to get kicked off. So in this case, though, I just want to have a window of five seconds. And in that five second window, I want to know how many events did I process? So how many logic apps came through? How, what's my average duration? How long are things taking? Uh, and that's pretty much it. And what's the step name? So this is my query. Hopefully that's clear. Pretty much I'm just grabbing all that data. I'm pushing into an event hub. I'm adding some extra stuff like what's the duration. I'm figuring out, you know, time, five second windows. And I want to push that into Power BI. Now when I run this, uh, do I have Power BI open? No, that's, oh, I do right here. Okay. I have gone ahead and created this dashboard already where when I run this, it adds data sets. You, you might not be able to see this, but at the very bottom, I use Power BI a ton, so there's a lot of these. Uh, but actually, the data sets it's adding for this one, it's called the Logic Apps data set, and you can create charts and stuff like that in Power BI. But I've just created this dashboard that is beautifully named Integration Monday, and I have some charts here that I want to analyze what happens in this Logic App that we just created. Okay. Now, I don't want to just run this and see you watch one event because that's not very cool. So I've written this really simple app, and I'm going to send 2,000. Yeah, let's change it to 2,000. It was actually 1,000, but I'm not a liar. <laughs> okay, this is going to send 2,000 events right after one another to my Logic app. So I've gotten, I've used the management API. I'm just doing an HTTPS call to run the management API. I'm just going to call that 2,000 times. I've just got this for loop here. So let's run this app. And when I run that, we're going to watch our dashboard. And this is, this is the icing on the cake, so there's better work, right? I tested this about two hours ago, but, man, the law of demos. So let's go ahead and start. So you'll notice it's going to push a bunch of stuff into my Logic App right now. And if we come to this dashboard, if we're lucky, fairly soon, our Logic App that we created is pushing those events into Event Hub. That Event Hub is getting read real time by Stream Analytics. And you can see here this chart now which is a live chart, uh, it will, you'll see it will update in real time. It's still in preview. The connection between Stream Analytics and Power BI is still in preview. So sometimes it works better than others. Uh, this time it looks like it's, it's hiccuping a little bit in terms of how real time it will let us be. But you will notice uh, that this will update. It might take like 20 seconds for it to update. But this is coming in. So for this first timestamp, which is 716 UTC time, I started seven logic apps. Uh, I had two blob write operations and what blob read operation. Here's the amount of operations that are succeeding. Here's the average duration. You see it's starting to update now. Uh, and you'll see that this chart's moving in real time. So now on Power BI, I am watching all of these events happen inside of my Logic App. I can watch things flow through it, right? This is a much richer experience and allows me to do a lot more stuff than just clicking through that portal and trying to detect failures. Now, this Logic App that I created has a flaw in it on purpose, and that I am writing the same file path and blob storage every single time I run this app. And if I'm writing it a thousand times, there's going to be times where I try to write it while someone else is writing it and it's going to create errors. So we have a retry after policy, but I will get some failures here uh, just because I built a flawed logic app right where I'm not doing it smart. So you'll notice this duration is going to start getting longer and longer as some of these start failing. But at the end of the day, probably about half of them will fail, half of the blob writes, because I'm writing them in such rapid succession. Uh, but you'll notice whenever failures pop up, and it will take it our retry after policy defaults to about a minute and 20 seconds, where it's going to try to do that action uh, a couple of times before it finally gives up and says, hey, it's not working. And you can customize that too. Uh, watch our webcast. We'll show you how to do that. But anyway, you'll notice once failures pop in, which will take uh, another minute or so, so I'll switch over to something else, you'll start to notice, because my Power BI dashboard will filter and say, hey, show me whenever there's a failure. Now, I'm going to pivot on that point. This was a cool live dashboard. Again, it's sometimes this live dashboard's like super live up to date. It looks like today we're unlucky enough that it's taken like 15 seconds. Um, oh, here's some failures that are popping through. So you notice failures popped up here, and here's our table that updated said our step was blob right. Here's when the timestamp was for the failure. Um, so what's cool here is I don't just have to have this in Power BI, right? I could easily, and this is where it gets really fun, and I want to make sure there's time for questions, so I might skip the Raspberry Pi stuff. Um, I could easily change my stream analytics query, and I'm actually not going to stop it right now because it doesn't like it when I stop it. But I could add in something. Let's switch to this view. I could add in something like select star from, I think it was log one was what it called, into service bus queue. Q 
queue where uh, status like um, failed, right? So I could have added that into my stream analytics job, which now stream analytics, whenever a failure pops through, could add something into a service bus queue. Now, why is that useful? Well, I could have a second logic app. Well, where am I? Oh, <laughs> I could have a second logic app. Uh, I think I actually started one that does like this. Yeah, I could have a second logic app that whenever something gets added into that failure queue, do something else. So maybe when something fails, add to the service bus queue and log it in SQL and send me an email to say, hey, by the way, this step failed. I thought you should know because you care about this workflow. Right? So stream analytics and queues allow us to do some really cool things to detect failures, to give us alert when failures happen. Again, right now, it's a lot of manual steps. I had to create this event hub. I created the dashboard. I created the stream analytics job. We're discussing and trying to figure out are there ways that we can make this easier or more seamless. But I at least wanted to show you that there's some cool stuff. Yeah, you'll notice the average duration right now is six, six, 60 seconds because most of them are failing. Um, but anyway, there's some really cool stuff that you can do with Power BI with Stream Analytics. Uh, one of the other fun things, I mentioned IoT, right? It's one of my passions. This is where I think, and maybe I'll just show you. It, it, it's along the same line. Stream Analytics will let you push into a queue, and Logic Apps let you read from a queue. Let me actually show you just this chart really quick, and then I'll open it up for questions. So, so here's the architecture that I use a lot, and there's actually uh, there's an Azure Friday coming out. I don't know if it's this Friday or the week after that I recorded, where, <laughs> and this is no joke, I uh, my lawn was dying because it has not been raining very much in Seattle this year. Uh, and I moved into a new house, and it doesn't have a sprinkler system because I'm in Seattle, and it's supposed to rain 24-7. But it's been a very dry summer, so my lawn was dying. Uh, I'm a new homeowner. I didn't know what I was doing. My wife was like, hey, you've got to remember to turn on the sprinklers, and I kept forgetting. So I actually created a logic app that every day at 7 p.m. it runs. It checks the weather forecast to make sure that it's not going to rain. It checks when the last time I watered the lawn. And if all the conditions are right, if it's not going to rain, if I haven't watered the lawn recently, it adds a queue item into Azure Service Bus. And I have a Raspberry Pi hooked up to my hose that has a valve. And all that Raspberry Pi does, the whole brain of this Raspberry Pi, maybe I can actually show you. I'll put this on that screen. The whole brain of that Raspberry Pi is, that's not the right one. Oh, it, oh it's actually, let, let me show you. It's, uh, it's in Linux right now. So I have a Linux VM to show you what the script is. And I, I want to show you this. I know, I hope we're not going over, and I do want to answer questions if there are any. Oh, this is it, actually. Okay, this is the actual script that my Raspberry Pi is running. Oh, this is what I modified to do the Azure Friday. But the whole script, the only thing I had to do on my Raspberry Pi to do a complex task like water my lawn when it's the right time is a Python script that, what is this, 21 lines, but half of them are blank and three of them are commented out, that pretty much says, look at this service bus queue, and if there's something on the queue, then do your action. And if there's nothing on the queue, just keep checking that queue, right? So what's cool about this and where I think Logic Apps has another potential is the whole idea of the Internet of Things, right, is you have this really stupid device, this really basic device, but you connect it to the Internet and now it can do really smart things. So you have this super lightweight script that just says, go see if I need to do something. And you could have Logic Apps be the logic or the brain behind your device, right? So the Logic App can do the hard stuff like knowing, do I need to start? What time of day is it? Let's integrate with all of these services. Whenever Logic Apps figures out, hey, I've got to water my lawn, just add something to the queue. And your Raspberry Pi or whatever will pick that up and do its action. So I love doing this architecture because it makes it so I just have to do really lightweight stuff on the actual device. And I can have this back end kind of figuring out the logic and the action. So I just kind of wanted to show that. And that's very related to this idea of this log and stream analytics. Again, I could write, whenever there's a failure, I could tell Stream Analytics, write that into a queue, go add an item into my queue, and then you could have a corresponding logic app that says, hey, by the way, whenever something gets added, when there's a message available, you need to go let me know that something failed. Um, okay, that was a lot. I feel like I, I, feel like I covered a lot, uh, but hopefully there were some techniques in there. You saw how we use conditions. We saw how we use custom APIs deployed from GitHub. We talked about resource management. Um, but hopefully that was useful to you. Uh, and again, if you got totally lost but you were interested in knowing more about how stuff worked, 
shoot me an email. Maybe I'll pop that up. Uh, and then, Michael, if you want to go ahead, if, if there's any questions uh, or anything, I've got a few minutes. I'm more than happy to, to answer what I can. Cool. Yeah, that was really great. Thanks for that, Jeff. I'm, I'm really kind of impressed that you order your loan with uh, Service Bus and Logic Apps. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, never a use case that I thought anyone would need in Seattle. But it's hey, true. There you there go. You go. <laughs> so we, um, we had a couple of questions came in. Um, Mike Andrews had a question, which I think is maybe more of a BI, uh, Power BI question, but yep. maybe you know anyway. So he was asking about options for plugging Power BI into Elasticsearch? Uh, um, I, uh, yes, I don't know the answer to that specifically. I do know the main, they have what's called Power BI Desktop. They're adding new ways to get stuff into Power BI all the time. If you want it to be real time though, if you want it to be like that was where second by second it was updating, uh, it either you either have to call their REST endpoints and say, hey, update with this data, or it has to be through Stream Analytics. Uh, if you want just historical data and you just want charts, uh, there are a lot more options. I don't know if they integrate uh, very well. Their basic ones are just, you know, kind of SQL and Excel, but there's a lot of options. But for real time, you are just limited to stream analytics or doing REST calls to their REST service. Yeah, yeah. So um, we have another um, question from Fabio. Um, Logic apps are really cool, but authoring a workflow in JSON feels like it'll be awkward. Um, What's the feedback from the community so far, and is there likely to be more Visual Studio or C Sharp support in the future? That's a really good question. I can only answer half of it, <laughs> but it's a great question. Uh, I agree. In kind of that code view, I spend a lot of time in code view for this demo, and that the the goal, if 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 I had my way, and I think if everyone on the team had their way. You would never have to look at code view unless you wanted to do a deployment, right? And the reason that there is a code view and we have the JSON definition is we want to enable that flexibility that lets you push straight to Azure Resource Manager and deploy Logic Apps rapidly or dynamically based on different conditions. Uh, the, the main thing we want to do is we are improving the designer and a lot of those things that right now you have to do in code view, like modifying some of those conditions, we're going to make it so that you can do that in the GUI, in the portal. Whether or not that portal makes it outside of Azure anytime soon and ends up in Visual Studio and stuff like that, I just, I will just say no comment. But I do encourage you all, if that's something that's interesting or other features, uh, go to the user voice website. And that actually is one of the items. It's one of our top items right now uh, is uh, add a, give us more ways to build these apps. I would encourage you to add some votes there because we do pay attention to that and help that in our prioritization. But uh, hopefully, in a perfect world, in the next few months, we'll, we'll make it so you don't have to use code view unless you want to, and you can do more right inside of the designer. Cool. So I've got a question, Jeff. Um, recently, I've noticed that um, some of the API apps that I've got seem to have um, got themselves an application insights instance that goes mm -hmm. with each API app. Just wondered if, you, if you're able to tell us a little bit more about kind of where that came from, what, what the thinking is with that. Yeah, so I don't know the official answer on this, but I will answer what I do know. So whenever you create a new project right now in Visual Studio, by default, I think, and I might actually even be able to But it's just a free service that just kind of goes on the back end and gives you reports. So I think, I think the, um, the API apps I've got are all um, out of the box, like the Office 365 one and SQL. Oh, one. and that's pulling application insights with it. Well, I think I think what it did is I think they're um, I think I've had them API apps for a you know since like April time. Sure. Yeah. And I just happened to notice who there's a an, API, uh, an app insights section appeared that wasn't there before. Oh. I guess. Uh, I guess that that's part of the the strategy for monitoring API apps. But it, it was quite interesting to see, you know, you doing the event hub stuff. Then it kind of made me think. Oh, I wonder if there's a, a plan to maybe put API apps and logic apps as well, and kind of then, then you get some of that out of the box kind of thing. 
Uh, no, I actually, that's uh, and I'm I'm curious. I actually will uh, I'll ask the the developer lead for our API apps to see if that it might be something that it's just a residual thing. But uh, I don't I don't believe we're doing anything with application insights right now. So I, it's interesting to see why that popped up. I might actually email you two and uh, get some information so I can figure out exactly where that came from and if it's from us. But as far as I know, we're it's not it's not from us at least that I'm aware of. Yeah, cool. I mean, it's, it's really great actually to see you guys start to think about the um, the BAM scenarios there because I know it's something in the community a lot of people have been talking about for quite a while because it it's sort of there's been this gap from the original biz talk story and we've kind of been waiting to see what the what the approach is going to look like but um, you know being able to, to just so easily create a visual of that logic apps I think is a really powerful thing. And it's a start, right? Yeah, but it, yeah, exactly. it definitely is. It's something that uh, we have weekly planning meetings, and I would say in every weekly planning meeting that I have been to since I've joined the team in July, that monitoring portion is one of the top items that we discuss and we bring in other teams and we try to figure out the best way. So it's definitely something that we uh, we care about and we want to figure out how do we close this gap. I think the other thing to remember with that is it's the power of being able to sell it as well because with um, integration, it's often you know there's no real real way to visualize a lot of an integration solution, but being able to have a real time sort of view of what's going on so easily is to people who aren't integration expert. That's a really powerful story that I think um, for a while people have struggled with in the community to be able to articulate to customers what what their integration solutions do. Um, so we've got a couple of last minute questions have just popped in. Um, uh, yeah, <laughs> so one of the guys has just said, um, if we put the, so the sessions are recorded, um, suggesting you might want to change your access key because... I oh yeah, I, uh, I, uh, I did, yeah, <laughs> for all my service, I'm going to roll the keys actually right after this, but I, <laughs> I was very aware of that, that all my service bus action keys and everything else were, were popped up there, so I did, I created a resource group just for this, uh, I knew it was being recorded, but it is a good tip. <laughs> So we've got um, Sven says, is it possible to call a local endpoint from a logic app with the SQL and file connectors? We've got hybrid connections, but not with the HTTP connector. Will that be available shortly, or is it possible via service bus? Right. Uh, it's a good question. This is actually something that popped up on the forums a little bit ago. But right now, out of the box, the only things you can talk to on premise is SQL, SAS, and kind of those high-end database type systems where we've built that in. Uh, HTTP right now does not support a hybrid connector. So kind of the best step to do right now would be to use Service Bus. This is this is my five cents on how I would do it. Uh, to use Service Bus Relay, but you'd have to create a custom API app. So there's a few docs out there on creating API apps that talk with on-premise systems. I know it's not the best solution. I, I like the idea of doing on-premise. I don't know what that story will be. Uh, but, but for right now, your best option would be create a custom API app where you leverage Service Bus Relay, which is the Service Bus service that our hybrid connectors leverage. Um, I, I believe BizTalk Service also has kind of the hybrid connector stuff that would probably work as well. Um, but you'd have to do it. You'd have to do it custom. So we've got um, Henry asks a question. Any chance of getting the stream analytics to talk to an API app instead of recycling through an additional event? So uh, I eat custom outputs from stream analytics. Yeah, it's a it's a good question. I don't have insight to that just because I don't know what's on the stream analytics backlog. I do know even in the last I'll uh, actually look at this now. Even in the last week, they've added more output methods. Uh, so if they potentially did an output as an HTTP webhook or something, where you could say, hey, instead of an output to the storage, just send an HTTP request. You could direct that to your uh, API app. I don't know if that's in the roadmap. It's something that I'm making a note right now because um, it's not a bad idea. And Stream Analytics is a service oh. I love. So right now it's not there. You have to do it through Service Bus um, or through SQL. I guess you could add an item in SQL and have a logic app to a SQL. Uh, but there's no directly from Stream Analytics into an HTTP call to like an API app. But it's a it's actually a pretty good idea. Yeah. Let's see. So we've got yeah, great topic queue. Mm -hmm. Cable, yeah. So there's nothing that would do that now, but uh, again, they, I, I think guess, they added these bottles to just this week. I guess for Henry, that's probably a one to have a check on user voice, and uh, if it's not there, share it around, and we can all vote 
Yeah. Because it does sound like a really good idea. Yeah. So I think that, that's the last of the questions. Um, we've, we've just got a couple more comments just um, re-emphasizing the, the real-time view of the Logic app through Power BI was, was exciting for everybody. So um, yeah, thanks very much for doing tonight's show, Jeff, and hopefully we can um, persuade you to come back again in a, in a few weeks or a few months' time when, when there's more cool stuff to, sh to tell us all about and stuff. Even the fact that you would say that after I feel like I just threw up a thousand <laughs> things, it's great. So I, I love coming here. And again, shoot me an email uh, if, if you want to set this up. So I, I, I enjoy coming here. I appreciate the questions and uh, very aware of, of this community and of the BizTalk group. And it's something I actually want to get more involved with, uh, learning more about some of the stuff coming uh, for this group particularly. So thanks for having Can, me. Uh, so Jeff, could we maybe be a little bit cheeky and um, if I sort of went out to the